What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and the final report from the investigation into Bob Saget's death has been released, and as promised, I am here to break it down and to react to it for all of you all. Now, the main detail that sticks out to me from this report is the fact that the cause of death changed yet again. Don't get me wrong, they're still saying that he must have accidentally fallen and hit in his head, but you might remember first they said he hit his head on the headboard, then a few weeks later they said he fell in the bathroom. Now they're saying that he slipped and fell on a carpeted floor. And I am calling total BS. I think that is total BS, and trust me, I have a lot of thoughts about that, but first let's just go ahead and dive right into this report get a little more details, and then I'll give you all my reaction. <laughs> all right. The report was released one day after a judge permanently blocked certain materials pertaining to the comedian's death from seeing the light of day. As I reported to you all before, the judge permanently blocked a lot of the details from the autopsy of Bob Saget from coming out to the public. So there's a lot of details about his death that we will never know. The Orange, County, the Orange County Sheriff's Office noted the final report complies with the order while remaining committed to transparency and following the law regarding to access of public records. Saget's room at Orlando's Ritz-Carlton Hotel where the actor died consisted of two parts. According to the report, the majority of the suite is carpeted with the exception of the entry hall and the bedroom closet which are wood flooring, and the bathrooms, which are marble tile. The description is noteworthy given autopsy findings. Investigators noticed that the interior door between Saget's room and the adjoining room was unlocked. The adjoining room was vacant and there was no sign that anyone had occupied the room in the intervening time frame. Police requested and received the lock integration reports from the entry doors for both rooms, but nothing noteworthy came back. Now, I did my own separate video reacting to the fact that he had an adjoining room. I think it's highly suspect. I think it's really fishy that the door for this adjoining room was unlocked. Never in my history of staying at hotels or motels have I ever walked into a door or ever walked into a hotel room and the adjoining room door was unlocked. It just never happened to me. I'm sure mistakes can happen. But I just find it odd that, you know, room keeping didn't lock the door and Bob Saget didn't come in and check that door as well. I mean, he's a celebrity. I would assume he would want his privacy. I would assume he would be worried about people maybe staying next door that wants to get a look at Bob Saget. I would assume he would have locked that door. So the fact that it's unlocked seems weird to me. They say they can't find any signs that there was anyone in that room and that there was no, like, no one used the key to get into that room. So... You know, who knows, but I think it's really weird. There was no evidence of a struggle or any type of foul play or that anyone else in the room at that or that there was anyone else in the room at any time during his stay, the report states. Saget was found deceased in bed on January 9th when hotel staff did a wellness check. According to investigators, there was no signs of blood on the sheets or anywhere else in the suite. Prior to transport, Mr. Saget's body was thoroughly examined and photographed. There was, swi there was slight swelling and a small bruise in the corner of the left eye. There was no indications of any type of trauma or injury, one officer reported. It wasn't until the following day when an autopsy was performed that police were alerted to Saget's head trauma. The autopsy was conducted by Chief Medical Examiner Joshua Stephanie. So basically they're saying there was no outward signs that he had this head trauma because they're saying that there was no, you know, this, there was no broken skin or anything from his injuries. Dr. Stephanie showed me the fracture at the base of Saget's skull, the evidence of bleeding around the brain and demonstrated the transfer of force that broke the orbital bo bones at the front of the skull. He examined that the amount of force necessary to cause the fracture coupled with the fact that the skin on the back of his head was still intact, led him, led him to believe that the injury was most likely caused by something hard covered by something soft. And he gave, as an example, a fall onto a carpeted floor. Huh. For one, 
I find it hard to believe that Bob Saget got this injury from falling on the carpet floor. For two, I mean, if he fell anywhere, I would assume the bathroom, but he fell onto a carpeted floor. It's kind of it's kind of hard to slip on a carpeted floor. I, I mean, it just, it all sounds weird to me. It all sounds so weird to me. I, I, I do not believe it. I do, I, I just, I can't. I cannot buy this bogus BS. Dr. Stephanie stated that the fracture would have stunned Mr. Sackett. And even if the bleeding occurred slowly, Mr. Sackett would have noticed symptoms such as dizziness and there would have, and there would have signs that were obvious to those around him, such as issues with confusion, balance, and or slurred speech. So, if there was someone around Bob Saget, they would have known that there was something wrong with him. We know for a fact that he talked to people earlier that night just before he went into his hotel room. He even had conversations with people from his hotel room and posted on social media. He seemed to be in a good headspace at the time. So, I mean, whatever happened to him had to be sudden. It had to be sudden because we know from the, the time of his death, from the last post that he did on social media, there's only a short time span there. I don't even think it's an hour. I can't remember the exact amount of time that was between his last post on social media and the time that he died. But I think it was like, what, like 45 minutes or something. It wasn't long. It was not long. So I don't know. I, I just... In a follow-up phone call with Dr. Stephanie on January 11th, 2022, I mentioned that Mr. Saget had apparently driven himself back from Jacksonville, the officer continues. Dr. Stephanie stated flatly that Mr. Saget could not have made any type of extended drive with the injury he, su he sustained, which I've been saying that since the beginning. It is highly suspect and high, and it's really weird that he drove all the way from Jacksonville to this hotel in Orlando to stay. I think that there might be something up there. I don't know if he was on the run. I know there's a lot of theories out there of why he was at this hotel, you know, for a certain, you know, type of bars that were in the area. You know, I don't know about all that. I don't know about all that. I do find it weird that he traveled all the way there. And I've been saying that there's no way in hell that this injury happened before he got to the hotel room because he wouldn't have been able to drive that far. You know, no way. Not with the amount of damage that was done to the back of his head. After the autopsy, investigators returned to Saget's hotel suite to try to and determine where he could have hit his head. Police ruled out countertops, tables, nightstands, and other hard furniture in the room because they all had sharply defined edges and corners and were thought to be unlikely due to the fact that they would have um, lacerated the skin. Police ruled out counters in the bathroom and the shower stall for the same reason. Now this is BS. They're saying that the police ruled out these countertops in the bathroom and in the shower stall. That they ruled all of these areas out. That is bogus BS because we know that the original story they gave us is that, oh, he must have hit his head on the headboard. And then they said that he slipped and fell in the bathroom. They said that he fell in the bathroom. So they're, them saying that, oh, they ruled that out, that's bogus BS because it was literally one of the stories that they gave us. So if they ruled it out, then why did they tell us that, oh, he must have sl slipped and fell and hit his head in the bathroom? You know what I'm saying? The investigators on this case literally just said that a few weeks ago before they changed it now to it must have been a carpeted floor. <laughs> and I, I got videos on my channel reacting to all that information. So this is playing out very weirdly because they're saying, oh, from the beginning, oh, we ruled out the bathroom and countertops. That's not what y'all just said a couple of weeks ago, but okay. All right, whatever they say, I guess we'll take their word for it. But man, oh man. <sighs> Most of the chairs and couches were thickly upholstered and were too soft to cause the type of the type and extent of injury Mr. Saget suffered, the officer declares. As mentioned earlier, most of the suite was carpeted. The headboard of the bed was lightly padded and set slightly out from the wall. 
These are listed here as possible mechanisms of injury, but nothing was located in the room that allows for a definitive conclusion. So, like I stated, originally, they said that he hit his head on the headboard. Now they're saying that they ruled that out from the beginning. So why did y'all come out in the media after he died and say, oh, he hit his head on the headboard? And it wasn't until people got on Google and was like, oh, no, he didn't because, look, the headboards in his room are cushioned that they changed the story to he fell and hit his head in the bathroom. So now they're saying, here's two bogus BS lies from this report already. They're saying that they ruled out the headboard and they ruled out the bathroom, but they're saying this like it happened, you know, almost instantly. Like from their, in, you know, initial investigation, these are places that they ruled out. Yet in the media, they've been saying that he hit his head on the headboard and that he fell in the bathroom for weeks until this final report just came out. This is the first we're hearing that they ruled any of those things out because that that's where they told us he fell. <sighs> this is extremely frustrating. I'm sorry, y'all. But as someone who's been paying close attention to every detail coming out of this case, to see them acting as if they weren't the ones telling us that he hit his head on the headboard, like they weren't the ones telling us he fell in the bathroom, it just blows my mind that they could literally just backtrack everything they said as if it never happened. Even though there's like, you could go look at the articles, they're still online. You could go watch my videos or other people's videos reacting to this information. Do they think that people just don't care, just don't, you know, pay attention enough to realize that they're, you know, that they're just spreading BS? <sighs> oh my God. Dr. Stephanie could not state definitively when Mr. Saget's head wound occurred, but he believed it was probably within hours of his death. A fall possibly could have occurred within a day or two of January 9th, but after multiple interviews with witnesses, that seems unlikely. So they're saying, oh, it could have happened maybe a day or two. No. Bob Saget did not crush his head all the way, literally crack his head from the back all the way to his eye bones, and then walk around and do stand-up shows and drive to freaking Florida, and then drive to Orlando from Jacksonville in the middle of the night with this head injury that he got two or three days ago. Another BS bogus lie. Another BS bogus lie, just to spread some doubt. Just to, to drop those seeds in there for the weak-minded so they could say, oh, there was nothing mysterious with Bob Saget's death. For all we know, he hit his head four or five days before he even went to Florida. Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> yeah, right. Saget performed a stand-up show on January 8th in Jacksonville, Florida. Police spoke with employees at the venue who interacted with the actor, and all of them noted how he did not consume alcohol or drugs. Mind you, the report came back and there was no drugs or alcohol in his system. So this isn't something that happened to him while he was under the influence. He was completely sober, yet somehow slipped on a carpet in a hotel room and hit his head hard enough to murder himself. <laughs> well, technically, you can't murder yourself, can you? I don't know. <laughs> oh my God. That's consistent with Saget's clean toxicology report. No one noticed any signs of cognitive impairment due to a serious fall. Of course they didn't. The dude literally did like a two or three hour stand up set before driving for another few hours to his hotel room. His brain and his head were perfectly fine. He posted just a few minutes before he so-called died from this fall in this hotel room he was posting on Twitter. Jeez. This is just, it's just insane. And it just looks to me like, almost like they're talking in circles to cover this story up. Because this doesn't sound, does this sound believable to y'all? Does any of this sound even legit to you all? It doesn't to me, but maybe I'm just I don't know. Maybe I'm just thinking about it too hard. But I, it just all seems like bogus BS to me. Richard Stanford, a production coordinator, told police, at no point did I think anything was wrong. He chatted with everyone. He had a good time talking with everyone. Rosalie Ann Cokie, 
a runner for the hospitality coordinator at the venue, recalled how Saget told her he recently got over the beer bug and mentioned his hearing was a little off, but said, I'm okay. Saget was beer bug positive at the time of his death. She told police Bob wasn't sweaty. He didn't miss, miss a beat. He didn't stutter. His language wasn't drawn out. Nothing slurred. He came out very energetic, very much entertaining the crowd. Saget drove his rental car back to the Ritz-Carlton, which is, is approximately two hours, two hours away from the venue in which he performed. Once again, no way in hell he drove that far, you know, with this damage. There was no damage to the vehicle, so it's unlikely an injury happened during the road trip. Some people were speculating they maybe got in a fender bender or some type of small accident in the car, maybe hit his head during that trip. But no, there's no damage to the car at all. The last person to see Bob Saget alive was Orlando Nunez, who works at a hotel works as a hotel valet at the Ritz Carlton. Nunez told police he and Saget made small talk for 10 minutes. Nunez said Mr. Saget seemed fine, fine, and he did not see evidence of slurred speech, balance issues, or anything else that caused him concern. Nunez and Saget took a selfie together. I actually made a video about this selfie and about the interaction that Nunez had with Bob Saget. You can go check it out if you want my thoughts about this. But it's clear that they showed a shot of his face. He was smiling. Everything seemed okay. There is no evidence or in, of injury or of the bruising near his left eye that was evidence that was evident after he died. So they're saying the bruising under his eyes it wasn't there in this last photo, which it wasn't. I've looked at the last photo very closely. Nothing there. So that's basically all we get from the report because the rest of the details are blocked. So we don't really know anything. So what did we get from this final report into Bob Sackett's death? We get a few people speak out, saying that they talked to Bob Sackett that day and that everything was fine. We get the information about this adjoining room, which I already broke down how I felt about that. I think it's really weird. And we get this last new theory about how he died. I don't want to necessarily call it, call it a cause of death, because death because the cause of death is still the same, but it's just a new theory as to how it happened. And I'm not buying any of it. I find it extremely hard to believe. It sucks that a final investigation report literally gets us nowhere because all of the information is blocked. Why is it blocked? <laughs> but the fact that this how he died or how they think he died changed so many times that really sticks out to me i really think it's weird because if they didn't know then why say anything in the first place most of you are watching this video you've watched true crime videos you've been in the mix of several different investigations let's just say and you know how these investigators and how these cops they're so stingy with the information. I mean, take the Brian Laundry, Gabby Petito case for an example. Here we are months and months away from this case being closed. It was already been closed and it takes a civil suit for us really to get information from this case. And the investigators the whole time, they're keeping all their information really close, really tight knit about all the information. Yet here, they're perfectly comfortable just coming out and just throwing things at the wind. Oh, Bob Saget, he, he died, he hit his head on the headboard, and he went to sleep and died. That was what the official investigators on the case said in official reports and to the media. If y'all were unsure about it, just say you're unsure about it. No, they literally said it must have been the headboard. And then people got on Google, saw that his headboard was a padded headboard, and then and only then did they come out and change their story. Literally, once the heat was put under their feet and under their asses, once people started making the videos, once people started spreading the word that, oh, wait, 
His headboard's a freaking cushion attached to the wall. Then it was, oh, wait, he slipped and fell in the bathroom. But they messed up there as well because we already got information that they didn't find any blood and they supposedly didn't find any hair in the bathroom. We already knew that from the investigation. And I'm sorry, but if you fall and hit your head hard enough on a marble, you know, bathroom, I guess, floor or a counter hard enough to kill you, I would think there would be a hair there, some blood. But let's just think about the fact that they didn't find any hair in the bathroom at all. That's sus in itself. Does that not sound like, damn, someone must have cleaned that bathroom up? You right now, go into the bathroom, wash your hands, take a shower, take a number one, take a number two. You're going to leave some hair behind somewhere. They couldn't find a single hair from Bob Saget's head, not even a freaking pube. You couldn't find a Bob Saget pube in the bathroom. It's like he didn't even touch that bathroom at all. Or, or, like someone really did a good job of cleaning it before anyone took a look at it. I'm just saying, extremely odd, there was not a single hair in the bathroom. So now, after we've already, you know, been pressing forward, keeping the pressure on them about this case, now it's, he slipped and fell in this hotel room on a carpeted floor. I call bogus BS. I think most of you all will feel the same. I'm not sure how you all feel. I'm interested in knowing how you all feel. But overall, I'll just say it like I've said it before. At this point, because they haven't been transparent with us, because they're not giving us any real information, they're not giving us any details to, su to suggest that this was really an accident, and they're almost like withholding other details that might suggest otherwise, I can only assume that the worst happened to Bob Saget. Moving forward in life, you know, because now it's time to move on from this case for the most part, unless more details come out, of course. But this is the final report. This is the last we're going to hear from it, at least from them. So going forward, I just have to assume that something bad happened to Bob Saget. That maybe Bob Saget was wrapped up into something Maybe there was people out after Bob Saget. Maybe Bob Saget knew too much. Maybe Bob Saget was on a particular list. Who knows? But I don't think Bob Saget slipped and fell and hit his head on the carpeted floor and died. And I will never buy that bogus BS story. And if they really wanted us to believe that, all they would have to do is prove it. They're the professionals. They're the investigators. Prove it. Or at the very least, let us look for ourselves into the information that y'all collected. But no, they can't do that. They can't do that because they know that that would lead to more questions. And they don't want that. They want us to go ahead and move on along, folks. Move on along. But I want to know your thoughts about all of this down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. And as always, find some time out of your day to go watch a movie.